unboxing time. I don't know how to make this more interesting when I'm just opening a box, but there you go. Ooh, scary knife. All right, Dungeon Crate. This month's theme is Elementally Speaking from the Depths of the Elemental Plains. Creatures of pure fire, water, air, and earth roam, looking to bring chaos to the prime material plane. You got me one there. You know what? Let me look back. Was I a dinghy? The mysterious graveyard howling. Our theme is Shadows in the Dark. I never even read that primer when it came to these old ones. What a ninny I am. Okay, yeah, I like that. So, what? Well, there we go, another another coaster. I think, I think I read somewhere that we're gonna end up getting the whole set, and I am not mad at that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm slowly becoming more and more of a fan of these guys. I, I do like them. Ten-sided die? You know, I don't use these very often. Not since I played uh, some World of Darkness and played with a lot of those. Cool. What's this? Ooh, okay. Talking, talking my language advanced deployment. Here you are again, guys. Okay, so it looks like we have an elemental acrylic set. Cut from colored acrylic set of elementals is a great way to conjure up some excitement at the game table. Use them as minifigures, spell effects, or as dungeon decor. Um, yeah, it's got little... I don't know how I'm supposed to fit them in. Okay, some of them have a little... a little nit, little, little bit. The sun one doesn't seem to. Uh, where's mine broken? It looks like mine's maybe broken? That's okay. I would, if I'm going to affix it, I'm going to do so permanently. Now, I do have elemental figurines for my game, and I do also have weather effects, but these are pretty cool. I could, I could find some really neat ways to use this, and um, looks kind of clever. You guys did something clever advanced deployment. Um, if you'll look closely, and I'll show you the picture here in just a second, um, they almost look like they're characters. You know, they are elementals, so they're not just a big old hunk of flame. It actually looks kind of like uh, a face, almost like a, a dragon or a snake face chomping down. So, the exception of whatever is going on with my sunburst here... Uh, well, no, you know what? It's missing a base, so maybe that one is just its own special kind of guy. Like I said, I'm not mad at that. You know, wow. When you see the Earth Elemental, that's the best one. Really cool design, guys. Okay, what's next? We've got... Oh, yeah. Um... What are they called? 2D full-color miniatures from Art Night Games. I like the ones that we've been given before. These are beautiful. Man, yeah, you're gonna like to zoom in on these. Another card, thank you. In the collection it goes automatically. And a little, a little character classes, magical element, spell schools of art. I like this a lot. I'm enjoying these. I am normally 3D, but just throwing this down, the amount of detail and the artwork is pretty gorgeous. So we're gonna move on to, I've got a Bones figurine a water weird. Uh, it looks like some sort of a... is that a well? And the water, like a vine with a skull at the end, is whipping out. and It's, a, it's reaching for the players. And it's also one of the ones that... I, I kind of like these because I like... I'm just going to rip it open. Just, just do it right now. Just go for it. Yeah, because I could stick a light up in this. Um, on the base and give it a little more of a glow. It looks like a well or maybe some magical fountain and the uh, that is reaching out and attacking. So I like when it's made of a, of a clear or a, some sort of a transparent acrylic. That's neat. I could see that being useful. Ooh, what's this? Wow, this is heavy, guys. This is heavy. Don't drop it and damage the table, but whoa, okay full set of mini dice from Metallic Dice Games. Uh, couldn't just order one, we had to order more. We were excited that they offered sweet mini dice. These are, oh gosh, these are cute. No lie, 
these look exactly like one of the sets that I use in my uh, Game Master's box. I have two sets. A red set that is for the enemies, the people they're fighting, and the blue set is for all of their allies. So if they're trying to find out some information from someone who's a good guy, but maybe they don't want to give up the secret, then I would roll Sense Motive or something with one of these. This is like the exact same color. It's bluish. Whoa, these are neat. Very cool. This is the one that's tripping me out here. A metal D20. I recently was gifted a metal D20. Um, and it's huge. It's called the Boulder. But this one is almost regulation size. And it is way heavy. I'm, I'm afraid to roll it anywhere. I need to get my dice box out. Hold on a second. Let me get it. All right, so here's one of my dice boxes. Um, these are some that I customized myself. Put a felt liner in. Did some sort of a lacquer on the outside. Wow. That's... That's really satisfying. That's really gratifying. Just boom. And so here's the other one I have. A little, a little overkill. That's okay. That's a little, that's a little too heavy for general rollability. But that's pretty neat. And I rolled an 18. So uh, yeah, if I'm fighting with a scimitar, then probably got a critical hit there. That's cool. So I'll show you those side by side. My metal die. I was about to put everything away, and then I noticed this little guy hiding in the back in just a, an envelope that I would reserve for more work appropriate. But inside is this huge dragon coin. Whoa, this is pretty impressive. Fire dragon coin from Rare Elements Foundry. I've been liking what you're doing, Rare Elements. You've got some, some cool stuff. Wow, okay. So, 100 gold point, uh, gold platinum, I don't know, 100 gold. And it's got the, uh, it's got the, the dwarven script, it's got the runes all around it, and it almost looks like a, a treasure hoard on the back as well. This is fantastic. Again, I would love it to be in something that I could showcase. A little plastic, you know, I mean, I know sometimes those can run a little costly and you're trying to to cut down how much this is but you know I love it this is really cool I love it all right gotta get a last sip of beverage before the October crate um, this one came in the mail and, and my male persons and female persons that jokes pretty terrible um, they usually take pretty good care of the packages but this one's got a serious dent in the top I hope it's okay I remember reading um, Wayne or somebody else with Dungeon Crate saying that it's not going to have a lot of stuff in the box, but the quality that they put in this one is supposed to be really high. So let's see. Oh, <laughs> a little too, a little too anxious there. All right, a lot of filler, a lot of fluff. Did they pack mine upside down somehow? What is that? That's weird. Okay, Dungeon Crate. The clouds move slowly across the bright full moon. You hear howls as the hairs stand on the back of your neck. A curse lingers in the air as arcane magic crackles in the distance. This month's theme honors Hallow's Eve with a bloodletting theme. Okay. So I was guessing that the August crate would be the Halloween crate, but it sounds like they're doing something very All Hallow's Eve based. You know, just reading this, it seems like they got a lot in here, so I don't know what I was reading about that crate. Maybe they're talking about November. I don't know. I'm just looking in here, just peeking in. This looks pretty awesome. First of all, we've got some sort of a werewolf patch. Werewolf gamer patch. If Boy Scouts could get merit badges, then why not your players? Gamer patches from JBM Press. Each pass represents a complete activity from the player and can be collected and worn to show your gaming experience. Okay. I had some ideas based on this, and because a friend of mine and I are still talking about it, I don't feel comfortable sharing it with you now uh, until maybe it becomes a thing or we put a, put a stop to it and it never will be a thing. But this is cool, okay. You know, I, having played Werewolf, um, maybe maybe I've earned my stripes, I've earned my badges. That's kind of cool. I don't know what I'd do with this, but um, I like it. 
What else? Go ahead. Boom. We've got a pack of critical hit effects. Okay. I think I saw a different version of this. Did these guys, did, did we get some like teaser cards in one of our previous cards? Is that right? Um, d -d 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 critical hit deck. I've got one of these from Pathfinder, but I'd be interested to see what these are. It's the Pathfinder one. I've got some qualms with its usability, its general usability. Um, but then again, I love flavor. I, I love flavor, text. Um, you never know when the wording of something is going to spark an idea, which sparks an idea, which sparks what your game becomes about. Okay. Always blister pack. Hard to open. So the artwork is the same on each card, which I guess for randomness is okay, but the more art you give me, the better. Um, I did buy a critical hit deck and a Kickstarter, but... Knave to chops, follow up, soften them up. Okay, now they did something really neat here. You'll be able to see it on the zoom in, but at the very top of the card, it has a ranking of what the critical hit really is, because you're not always going to threaten death. Critical hit could just be a maiming, a scarification. It could be that you destroy their armor. Uh, here it says a setback. So maybe double damage and they're blinded till the end of the next round. I like that. Setback versus dangerous. So they just take a lot of pain, followed by, oh, there's a lot of dangerous, that's good. So it's not, it's not all, you know, it's not all gonna be 25%, 25, 25, 25. It, it should be a lot more just, you get your butt whooped. Followed by, where was it? Life-threatening. Okay, now we're getting more serious. Maximum double damage. That, that could hurt, don't, don't you dare take one of those from a great axe, because that is life-threatening. Quadruple damage, whoa, okay. Uh, this is, I hope my, my players aren't watching this. So life-threatening and then followed by deadly. Just, I'm just reading a lot of the word quadruple, 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 quadruple. Whew. Now I will allow in my games there to be instant death. Um, but I give that benefit to the players and not the NPCs. So NPCs have just as much ability to kick your butt. They can do a critical. They can hurt you. They can maim you. Um, they can go above and beyond. But they cannot instant kill my players. They can hurt them enough and kill them. But one roll will not necessitate an instant kill. But I give that to my players. I know it's a little bit of a homebrew rule, uh, but I'm comfortable with it. These are pretty cool, and I can see myself using them from time to time. It has a little bit more rules, and I'll read that in greater detail, but I think my players will see this coming in the near future. All right, digging back in, let's see, we've got more dice. What are these? A set of glow-in-the-dark dice from Metallic Dice Games. Did I just get Metallic? Well, I got those special in the, uh, in the Founders level. Cheers. But this is a full polyhedral set. I like that. Because before I had some, these are D8s. I'm, I'm usually using D6s and D20s um, for most of the characters and most of the things I need to roll. But I like having a full set. I'm just kind of a completionist that way. And um, Metallic Dice Games, they, they seem to have pretty high quality stuff. So uh, charge under bright lights. Well, of course I will. That'll be fun to play with. We're almost scraping the bottom of the barrel here, and I don't mean that quality-wise, because it looks like Advanced Deployment is at it again. Uh, you know, I've been on their website a few times, and I'm probably going to purchase some tokens, some of the customizable tokens. I don't think I've ever seen this before. Wow, look at that. So these are Magic Circles and Blood Splat Markers came from advanced deployment. Um, I've backed a couple Kickstarters that are doing something like this on plastic, like vellum sheets, really high quality, and you can get different types of spell templates. 
but in reality you don't need the hugest plethora of that uh, just to throw down on a flat surface but bright color and a little bit of texture in the way they've been etched this is pretty cool I recognize a few of these types of symbols but what I like most is that they do fit inside each other we're probably talking a one inch and two and three inch something like that diameter and then these blood splats these look pretty cool um, they're a little on the cartoonish side but I can get them all here you know this is I, I'm subscribed to several youtubers who especially dungeon master Scotty or DM Scotty and he in a recent video showed you how to make little like meat chunks like parts of corpses and stuff and and that can be very macabre and very realistic and look good but if you're just following maybe a blood trail or something that's not quite as gory I think this is really cool because it's it's bright and it's shiny and it, it's a great little splatter pattern splatter pattern that's a hard thing to say um, but that could be really useful I've got almost an entire box full of advanced deployment tokens at this point, so I could just add this to it, you know? Maybe maybe some of the elementals from the previous box are dripping blood, I don't know. And another mini-adventure. Thank you for doing this. This is important, more so than I think you guys realize. I love the idea of a digital crate, but that also means I need to use it on the computer. If there is something to print off, I have to print it off. I have to do it on cheap paper. Or I have to buy good quality paper and I have to figure that out. Here, you give me a card, like a four inch by four inch card that'll fit into almost anything I have over there. I can hide this behind my Dungeon Master screen and I've got a simple little game, a four to six level characters, which is where my, my people are. Oh, I'm sorry, it's four to six characters that are level five to six, which is about where they are. And then the story. So it's just like a little dungeon. Throw them in the middle of this. I'm asking them to go and follow up on a rumor. Instead, they decide to go down into this dungeon. What do I do? I haven't prepared. Well, I can try to really dig through a magazine. I have some old dungeon magazines. But that's sort of a hard resource to just flip through and find something. I love having these around. So the, the ones that we've done before, um, and I believe these are coming from... I believe these are coming from Adventure a Week. Um, 5e compatible. I'm playing Fat Pathfinder, but I know very well how to go back and forth. So, you know what? I think we have a problem here. Uh, at the bottom, Werewolves and Vampires Flat Minis from Arknight Games. I didn't get them. Oh, yeah, that's right. They were not included in this box. I do remember reading that, so they're going to be sending them in next month's crate. I do believe I'm subscribed again, but if something happens and I pull out at the last second, they're going to mail them in the future. Yeah, that scared me for a minute. That's not like you guys at uh, Dungeon Crate, but if they weren't ready on time, I understand. No apologies necessary. So thank you for watching my first ever unboxing. I'm gonna get nice, tight shots of some of these.
friends, it looks like I'm all out of tasty beverage. It's getting kind of late and my video just finished processing. But before I go, I wanted to say a quick thank you so much for watching my video. I've never done something like this before, an unboxing, and I can't believe I squeezed four unboxings into basically one video. But I feel very strongly about Dungeon Crate. I appreciate what they do. I like the product they've been bringing to us, especially over the last few months. Of course, there's always room for improvement. I'm not afraid to say that, but I think by and large, they're doing a great service and they've got some great ideas and I think they want to continue to grow. They're supporting some people that I really enjoy in the community, especially Pixie Art, um, Advanced Deployment, and a few more that are just too numerous for me to remember right now. Uh, but I love all the stuff that I've gotten. And if you feel like checking them out, please do. It's worth your time. Uh, I'll put their information here. There will be a link down in the description below. If you want to learn more about me, the Crafty Bastard Gamer, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you leave a nice comment, I'm very prone to turning around and watching your videos and subscribing to you as well. So I love a little reciprocation, and I, I love seeing what it is that you guys do, especially if you spent the time to watch my video. Also, you can find me on my website, my good friend Zach, who is known as the 9to5 Gamer. He and I have a website called The Foundry. Um, we have a Foundry Cast podcast, which is fantastic. It's probably the favorite thing of mine that we do. And you can find the website at thefoundrycast.wixsite.com forward slash home. Uh, a lot of fun, interesting stuff going on there. So I'll put that information here, and the link will be in the description down below. As always, thank you so much. Keep crafting, and I'll see you next time with Crafty Bastard Gamer.